Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another weekly webinar here with us at, uh, at LiveTOS. So today we're going to take a look at how you can do a bit more with Microsoft Teams. Uh, many of you may have been newly introduced to Teams due to the coronavirus and have been using it for things like calls and meetings, which is great, but there's a, a lot more to Teams than just that. And uh, today I've got uh, my uh, colleague here, Simon Tyrrell, the Chief Product Officer at LiveTOS. Morning, Simon. Hey, Chris. How are you going, mate? Going well, going well. So, look, Simon um, Simon is going to be uh, sort of taking you through this session today. I'll, I'll pretty much be sitting back and letting him uh, him go. I'll be keeping an eye on the time to make sure we, we keep him on schedule because we've got 45 minutes here and we've got a lot to get through. So um, it's going to be a great session talking about where, where we can take teams. So if we just click over to the next one. Uh, as you would, would know if you've been here before, uh, we are a global company specialising in employee collaboration and communication software and services and AI for the workplace. We're in a whole bunch of different locations around the world and uh, we are ready to go today. So today will be a bit of a mix of Simon's insights and demonstrations for you. So Simon is just going to, I've wound him up, I've got him ready to go. In a nutshell, it's all about helping you prepare for the next step that you might want to take with Microsoft Teams and really start leveraging the software more. So Simon's going to go through planning out your, your phase two activities, what that might look like for you, how corporate comms are a key part of any successful plan, how you can use Teams as a bit of a hub for unifying apps and systems. Um, he'll then dive into how you can manage meetings intelligently and then talk about how to collect ongoing feedback from end users, which is a, a really key thing in this new world of, of remote working for the masses. So we've got a bit to get, uh, get through, so um, I'll hand it over to Simon and uh, let him go. Excellent, thanks Chris and uh, hi everyone, thanks for joining us. So what I thought I'd do is set the scene with this, uh, just a few slides first on the things we'll be showing, then I'll jump into showing you some stuff that, that our customers are doing, uh, also a sneak peek of some brand new stuff that we've been working on that um, is pretty exciting and, and, and might get your uh, imagination going. So what, what we've seen through um, the COVID situation over the past few months has just been an extreme acceleration um, <clears throat> of the use of teams and then even the deployment of teams within organizations of all types. We've seen organizations that had you know nine, 12 multi-year programs of work plan for, for Office 365 and, and Teams deployment condensed down into weeks. Um, one customer that's top of mind literally went from a 12 plus year, a 12 plus month uh, project plan to deploying teams in just over a week. And you can imagine the uh, the change of working habits um, and the potential disruption that causes, but on the flip side, the potential of, uh, of gains and productivity, collaboration uh, and work practices that can come if, it, if it's well done. And in that organization's case, we've been working with them doing a lot of what I'm about to, uh, about to talk about. What we're also seeing is that in lots of organizations, Teams is regarded as the thing like Zoom, um, for meetings and you know it'd be interesting to to hear at the end of today when the Q&A session is in your own organizations how is teams regarded and we hear many many statements like oh yeah this is just like zoom or I could you know what what do I do after a meeting and those sorts of things and <clears throat> as many of you probably know teams has a huge amount of functionality um, it's actually got a lot of complexity to it and what you can achieve um, and that requires you to think about what, how, how is it going to be used? What use cases does it, does it do? What is its relation to, to our intranet, which used to be a place that we try and get people to go to? Um, how can we leverage the fact that if people are all in teams to have their meetings, maybe they're collaborating within, within teams, et cetera, sharing files, um, how can we leverage that we actually know where they are and how do we get to them? So the starting point for that, which I'll show uh, very, very shortly is, well, how do you plan for it? And, before COVID, we actually, and I've got a copy here, we actually created a physical card game, um, which was all about having a bit of fun about how you think about teams, apply it to business use cases, think about how it might be structured and do it in a fun and engaging and quick way. Of course, COVID and work from home um, sort of made that physical game completely redundant. So we've, uh, we've digitized the game and I'll show you shortly uh, how you can use that and how we're using that with customers to just have a bit of fun, strip teams back to its bare essentials and think about how it needs to be structured and the types of functionality you need, the high level security model you might need um, to, help you, uh, to help you plan. 
So once you've got a plan for how you're going to succeed with teams and how you're going to scale it into, into various use cases, various business departments, divisions, teams, processes, etc. What about your corporate communications? Another trend we've seen is that the attention that users are now giving to teams and the time they're spending in teams um, has mean that corporate communications has been become even more challenging. And I think it's fair to say teams and other tools like Slack, et cetera, are not built for that top down, all of organization uh, communications and messaging and engagement. They're specifically built to create groups of people to come together and, and do stuff. And in many ways, they create a whole bunch of new silos. So how can you start to uh, cut through that, still get your corporate message out there and leverage the fact they're in teams as opposed to trying to grab their attention back from it. So we'll show you some stuff uh, we've been working on in that space too. Then we'll talk about, okay, how can we start to use teams as a vehicle to unify all sorts of things for the user so it's one click away. Once again, Teams has some functionality around apps and tabs that you can add, but a lot of our customers users find it gets out of hand really quickly. Once again, it's still sort of isolated in those team silos. So for example, a tab for a planner in a project team makes a ton of sense, but what about all the other data information sources that your employees need to rely on um, every day? How can we make that available to them? Once again, one click away. And as part of that, I'm going to show you something really hot off the press about how we start to try and unlock the knowledge um, that is stuck, or some would say trapped, in all the recorded meetings that I'm sure you're doing in Teams. You know, how many meetings do you attend where someone clicks record, you get a notification at the end saying the meeting's been recorded and is available, how many times have you actually gone back and watched it? And yet those, those assets are, are rich in in context, in information and knowledge. So we'll show you some stuff there and how that applies to, to unifying within, within Teams itself. And finally, we'll, uh, we'll show you uh, a thing we call Live Tiles Vibe, which is actually a pre-service we've pulled together and it came out of a need for ourselves uh, during the early stages of the COVID and work from home uh, situation. But once again, how can you use this type of service to touch base with your staff about any sort of topic, uh, solicit their feedback, understand how they're feeling about various things, whether that be well-being, whether that be returning to the office, for example, which I was talking to our head of people and culture last night about. Um, and, and how can you make that, once again, accessible to your users where they're getting the work done, which in many organisations' cases now is actually in the Teams application. So that's the context of everything we show. Let's jump in and, uh, and show you some of this stuff in, in action. Uh, so just while someone's they... getting the next one set up, just if anybody does have any questions uh, for us today, please uh, put them into the, the question box there and we'll do our best to answer them. If we don't get to them today, I'll take them on board and get you some answers uh, afterwards. So, sorry, Simon, yeah, we back may, to you, mate. We may, have one. we may have one there too, Chris, a little icon is flashing at me. Um, so let's quickly talk about how you can rapidly plan out. So this is our digitised version of that, that Teams game, card game that I referred to earlier. And, and prior to COVID, we were using that game with customers, uh, with Microsoft, themselves and some of their teams on, on just trying to understand what to do with, with teams. And what this provides is it's not another workshop with big business requirements, and it's particularly powerful for when you're engaging users in your organization who don't really understand what Teams is, is capable of, or perhaps the notion of this fully digitized way of working is, is a bit of a shock to the system. You know, they're not used to doing that. So I'll just quickly show you how you use this and how fast it can be. So the first thing you do is you start to profile the team you're talking to. So for example, if we were talking to the HR team here, we can start to go, okay, what's, what's their need from one to five to collaborate externally? And that's externally to the organization. So that's probably, uh, let's say a two for this one. Their need for social connection within the organization within their own team, let's say that's four. Do they manage sensitive information? Absolutely, that's a five. And do, does this team need to be discoverable to those who aren't defined within its, within its membership? And let's say maybe that's a two. And that just gives us a reference point, almost a persona for the team that we can we can come back and sanity check some of our decisions. We then start to map out what teams we might need. So for example, we could start with a HR one, but we might start to go, well, actually we also might need to do, say, a separate team called policy development, for example. And so we can start to really quickly map this out. We'll move marketing off to the side now and start to just 
brainstorm what teams might be actually used for, for the HR function within the organisation. Then of course, we need to think about what channels get added. So let's have a general channel and let's maybe now think about, well, actually maybe we also need, oh, I don't know, let's do a, um, an updates channel in the policy development. We might want to think about, um, let's, let's do, I don't know, um, enterprise bargaining agreements, for example, PBAs. Um, and this is very similar to the discussion we had recently with the government customer um, that started to look like this. Once we've got our channels lined up, let's start to think about what apps do we need? What sort of content do we want to manage? What, what might we want to integrate? So we'll move this around and the flexibility here is you can just move around and of course we, we have our files app which every, every uh, channel will have by default and then we can add that and then we can start to go well yeah there's going to be files app in, in updates but for example we might also want to add to our policy development for our EBA uh, area let's add an app and let's call it planner board. all right so that tells us we need to add the the tab which links to a planner board because we're using that potentially for for task management so very very quickly you can start to just ideate through how would this team look uh, do we have too many channels do we have too many apps is it too many teams if you start to realize you you're getting a too many channels you can then really quickly split out and create a different structure and then sanity check it there's a timer built in so you can give yourself some time pressure and we've also got an event card system i'll just quickly show you one of those where you can write your own events or you can pick from serious or fun events such as you know rats rats you know your office has been infested by rats and everyone needs to work from home quite ironic given what given what happened we didn't think of covid when we came up with that one but the idea here was was to challenge the the participants and okay what would happen if all of a sudden our processes need to be fully digital what would change about this structure and the functionality we need once you've got it you can snapshot it you can share it and then we have another tool available uh, called the planning tool which allows you to capture this in more detail and start to look at are we at odds with some of our settings for example if we've said hey we need to we need to collaborate externally a lot maybe it has switched off um, external guest access that's going to be a problem for you to meet your use case and you can also start to say well actually the eba is going to be a private channel and just indicate there so that's a private channel that, that we've locked off. So really quick, fast, engaging, fun way to get your organisation to think about um, the way teams can be applied to business process. So that's the teams game. So we've done our planning, we're starting to get teams rolled out. What do we then do about corporate communication? So as I said in the introduction, Teams is not great at this. It's not built for it, nor is Slack, nor is many of the messaging tools and, and chat tools out there because they're built around team collaboration. Um, so what we've got here is our Lifetiles Reach platform. Now this is a really uh, lightweight, cloud-based corporate communications tool. It can be integrated into your intranet as well. But what we're dealing with here is we've got this as a pinned app in the sidebar of Microsoft Teams. And you'll see here I'm getting all sorts of content coming in that you would expect on a sort of traditional corporate communications page. Interesting enough, I'm getting some information here coming from an external systems, which has been summarized by an algorithm. It's bringing together five or six different sources around these topics in, in, in COVID-19 and automatically publishing that uh, for users to, to keep up to date. I've got alerting here, so I can see our office reopening update is being uh, flagged as an alert, which means it notifies everyone and sticks at the top. You can include polls into, into your content. You can include um, acknowledgement of, of reading the articles, all sorts of stuff. And th the beauty about this is not only for the users to be able to access this information, but also for the creators, the corporate communicators, the people responsible for communicating out to your organization. So think of yourself in a meeting, your CEO has just said, we need to get this update out to our staff now. That meeting was held in Teams. You've ended your Teams meeting. One click away, you're into the Lifetiles Reach application, and then you can click and you're into the content authoring experience if you have access for it. Anything below the line is information we've previously published. Anything above the line is still in draft. So within Teams here, I'm creating in a very simple 
uh, medium.com style, really, um, way of communicating with our organisation. I've got all of the, um, let's see, demo an article. I've got all of the things you would expect uh, within a corporate communications tool. I've got my ability to do my, my content. I've got my ability to, to format that, add tables, add images, add videos. I can do multilingual if I wish to. I can select keywords to match this to. For example, we could say this is relevant to Berlin, for argument's sake. I can ask for that reader confirmation that I mentioned before. Likes and comments can be turned on and off. Uh, I've got version control and I can set whether this is alert, alerting or not. And once I've done that, I can submit for approval if that's the only rights I have, or I can choose to publish it. And then that's gonna go, it's gonna be accessible from the Teams app, both within the Teams client, which I'm in now, but also the mobile client. There's also a dedicated mobile experience. So if you have, uh, members of your employee base who aren't licensed for Office 365, perhaps they're frontline workers, kiosk workers, um, that type of type of user, they can also be getting this central source of information. So your Teams user getting in with Teams, the rest of your organisation can be getting it through through the dedicated mobile experience. And once we're in there, I'll just go back in and you'll see that article's um, now available. And I've just had a notification on my watch that, that that's been published and away you go. And you'll see there, there's my demo article. So once again, how do we get to our users within teams where they're doing their work now, where they're having their meetings, they're collaborating within their smaller teams, how can we reach them? Hence why, why we call it Lifetime's Reach. So we're now being able to communicate with our people. We, we can get to them um, and we can make sure they're, they're across and there it comes in my notifications just there. So. What else can we start start to do? Well, let's think about how we start to once again give that one click access to aggregation of information. So this is a, a platform uh, we call Lifetiles Everywhere. And it is actually the evolution of, of something that's been in our internet product for quite a while. And it's about how can we start to bring together an experience that aggregates things, that provides one click access to things, um, and we're seeing a huge amount of interest in our customer base for this in Teams because once again, Teams isn't good at doing this at a top level. It's great at doing it at a, at a team level. So what we can see here is I'm just showing you an example. This is all centrally uh, managed and configured. You can target these, uh, these experiences to certain groups of users. So for example, the marketing team might have um, a panel here that's not available to anyone else or the finance team, et cetera. You can use it for anything like we did here. We pulled together a page in the early days of COVID just to, just to aggregate external content about what is coronavirus, what's COVID, what's happening in, in the US, for example, where we, where we have a significant amount of staff. It can also bring into, you know, your classic quick links type functionality that, um, that intranets have, and that's also available on an intranet. Here we can bring in things like recent documents from not just what Teams has got, but from across everywhere within Office 365. We can start to bring in alerts and notifications. Once again, that's driven in our case from our, from our intranet platform, but bringing it into this experience. We can start to uh, embed the people directory. So yes, Teams has an organisational directory, but it doesn't have a great people search experience. So this is driven by our intelligent directory. Uh, platform and what this enables us to do is to not only find people and see where they sit in the organisational hierarchy but be very confident that this information is up to date because that intelligent directory is feeding um, the data from the users because it checks in with them and says hey Vanessa I'm missing this or in this case hey Eric I'm missing a business phone number. Now in this case that doesn't matter we don't mandate that within our profile information but if we did, Eric would be constantly reminded, we need to get this from you, we need to get this from you. And he can do one click update and it goes into the back end system. He doesn't have to worry about it or care where it's stored. And then that feeds into the ability to find people. And of course, we can start to go and think about embedding different social experiences. So in this case, our, our LinkedIn process, um, our link, oh, sorry, Instagram, I think this is or Twitter. So. Once again, just a quick snapshot of the types of things you can do. It's really key for me to point out that you can do anything with this. So you can aggregate data from systems. You could provide insights and access into line of business systems such as Salesforce, Marketo, a HR system. You can embed bots, you can embed forms technology. The idea here is 
what makes sense for our users where it's one click away and I've got access to all of this capability without diving back out of Teams into a, another system, without diving into a team and trying to remember where we added the tab that made Planner available, for example. And in, I, I think a practical example of that is something we're doing with what we're calling smart meetings. So we've seen this trend and, and the data from Microsoft uh, that they've released supports this. Just a phenomenal amount of minutes per day is being spent in Teams meetings. I think Microsoft put out a number, something like 2.4 or 2.7 billion minutes a day in Teams meetings, which is just phenomenal. They also announced a 500% increase in, in about a week um, of recorded meetings going on. Now we started asking ourselves and we started asking some customers, who watches the recorded meetings? And 99.9% .9 of the responses we got was, well, nobody, nobody sits there and goes back. But yet if you think about all the discussion, all of the information being shared in those meetings, all the knowledge being captured, it's trapped, it's trapped in video files that no one's referencing. So we've been working on this um, solution where we start to unlock the value of those by allowing you to interrogate all of the recorded meetings you have access to, it treats them like a database search, basically, and then creates a personalised um, highlights video um, of all the meetings where the thing you're looking for was referred to. And I'll quickly show that as an example. Um, I know that uh, Carl, our CEO, has been in a number of meetings where they've talked about Hyperfish, which is the, the previous name for our intelligence directory. So what I'm asking for here is show me every clip from every recorded meeting I have access to where Carl was a participant and they talked about Hyperfish and I'll group by meeting. What this is doing is it's going, it's interrogating an index of everything, it's not moving the videos and you'll see here I've got six recorded meetings but up here I've got a dynamic virtualized feed of, of the videos which is five minutes, just over five and a half minutes long and that is made up of all of these clips per meeting. So you see it's multiple clips in each meeting where Carl's a participant, and there he is looking, looking a bit tired, um, and talking about Hyperfish. And at any time, I can jump out into that spot in that full meeting. Why is this important? I can see body language. If they're sharing a PowerPoint slide deck at the time, I can, I can see what was being shared. I can hear the context of this. I can then see what was said before it and after it. So that ability to very quickly um, sync up with what's going on or what was said if I've forgotten, perhaps it's daily stand-up meetings or project status meetings. I've been away sick or I've been away on, on some holiday leave. Um, I can quickly catch up on that. And so once again, very powerful feature, but if it was just stuck as another app somewhere else that I had to go to, I probably wouldn't bother. Bring it into Teams where I'm having these meetings, make it available from live tiles everywhere, and all of a sudden it's, it's something that people might get might get value out of. So that's Live Tiles Everywhere. It's all about reach, um, connecting your users in the tool they're in without them having to leave it to all sorts of data, systems, applications. And, and really it's, it's whatever you can think of could be used um, within this context. And as I say, important to note, this is just our internal example, but this could be anything your organisation wants. And most importantly, it is centrally configured and managed. And also, this can appear on your intranet. This can be on your SharePoint online intranet, for example. The exact same experience can be made available. And we're also working on, um, on some future stuff around how it might be a generic browser extension. We're working on how it um, uh, can be available within Outlook as well. So one way of accessing all sorts of stuff, centrally configured, but made available to your users where they're getting, where they're getting their work done. So finally, I wanted to touch on how can you reach out to people and, <clears throat> and start to see how they're feeling about things. And we announced Lifetales Vibe um, early on in the COVID piece and it came about because internally we were looking for um, how can we connect with our employees given that everybody, now we've always had a flexible working arrangement here at Lifetales, but not everyone worked from home. We had a lot of people in offices all around the world and all of a sudden that was disrupted. I'm sure it was with, with all of you on this webinar. And so we wanted to quickly check in with people. We started looking at survey tools. We started looking at our other tools that do sort of more HR type stuff. And 
they were very complicated and they weren't necessarily just a simple but flexible capability. So we started working on this concept of, of Lifetime's Hive and it's, it's now a service that we're making available free of charge. Um, and what it allows you to do is select from a, a central set of, of templated questions. And the idea here is these are not big surveys. These shouldn't take 15 minutes to, to fill in. They're, they're one or two simple questions that are delivered to your users in Teams. We're also looking at this as well as in email, uh, in other tools as well. Um, but they, they're momentary assessment. So, hey Simon, how are you feeling about this? And I should be able to click, click, bang, gone. I don't need to worry about it anymore. It's not just a dumb notification that I need to click on the link and go to another system and then step through doing whatever it is. It's a point in time, this is how I'm feeling. So there's two examples here that you can see, how am I feeling today? Am I happy, sad, anxious, neutral, or, or feeling a little bit frustrated and angry? So I'm feeling happy, I can go and share that. And here's another type of question that we're rolling out internally. Um, you know, how would you best sum up the week you've had? And how would you uh, sum up how you feel about the week ahead? And it's a different type of question, but exact same um, process of interacting with it. How do you in interact with it? Well, I'll jump over into the application. So it's deployed as an application into Teams. Um, and here you see the two cards that I was just interacting with. If we go and look, look in at our wellbeing chat, you can see here, got a couple of responses, some, some analytics here. I can schedule the card. So every Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday at 9 a.m., for example, it could ask this question. I can manually force it. So I'm just gonna send that back to that channel now. Or if I want a new card, I can come in and I can choose from a template. Now these are templates that we can make available to you. There are also templates that, um, that we can do specifically for your organization. So you'll see here, for example, we're working with one of our customers, which is all around how you're feeling, but also how you're feeling about current workload, which is something that they're, they're interested in understanding. So I can, for example, select one of these cards and quite easily give it a name. I target it at a channel within the team. I can schedule it, like I mentioned earlier, and I can create it. And now that card is available to be posted to that team or eternally if it's on a scheduled basis, it can start to just ping it whenever you want. And as I say, we're looking at multiple channels here for this type of thing. And if I just go back to general, you'll see how productive I felt today, how am I feeling today, which is the one I sent before at 9.59 and 10. And don't think it's just about well-being. We've had, uh, we've had some partners and some customers talk to us about this could be used for uh, at the end of every week, Hey, are there, is there some unforeseen issues coming up in the project, in the team that, that we need to address next week? Another customer's um, looking at this for how they can schedule it to happen an hour before their team leadership catch-up meetings so they can then use that data to, to have discussions within the leadership meeting about how they better support the staff who, who they feel are, are working under a lot of stress at the moment. So you, really you can use it for any type of question. The key thing being, it's, it's quick, it's fast, it's simple, it's in the context of the tool where, where I'm working. You could do this at an organisational level, you could also do it at a team level as well. And so that's basically four quick ways that we're seeing um, organisations really start to try and engage their workforce in teams with different styles of solutions to problems and benefit from the fact that users are in teams. So they've got a channel where they can get engagement. And just quickly to sum up, planning for success, using something like our Teams game to have a bit of fun, um, make it a simpler way to explain to people how it all works um, and start to get them to really think about how, the, um, how they can use Teams. Two, think about how, what does it mean for your corporate communications? How do you get cut through? Things like Lifetile's Reach provides that one click away. You can publish centrally. You don't have to worry about it. Three, how can I start to engage my users by unifying the different stuff they might need in, in their lives? And all, some of this stuff might be stuff you've classically thought about being on your intranet homepage. Okay, cool. Let's leverage that. Let's bring it to a new, a new experience for the users. And that's also going to work in the mobile Teams app as well. 
And finally, how can you use the fact that, that your users are, are working and spending time in a tool like Teams to engage them, to solicit their feedback, to get answers to questions, whether that be how they're feeling about things or whether that be raising things like issues. How can you do that really quickly and simply? And as you saw, all of that was is in with the team within the team's experience. We're not asking users to change their the work practices that they're potentially developing now because they've been uh, really in many ways forced into in working in new ways. Um, and it sounds and like you wanted to take a quick uh, quick breath or a quick uh, glass of water while I can handle this slide for you if you like. Uh, that was a fantastic presentation. That's the first time I've, I've seen Simon in action doing this one. And I, I could see from some of the questions that were coming through, the people are getting a lot out of that. I think basically this is summarising up here how you get access to any of those things that Simon has been speaking about is you can jump onto that link and, and book a complimentary workshop. So I, I know, uh, Mark Lantry, you had a question about that. Um, so that is the way to get hold of that. Uh, we have got a question here, Simon, just while we're on this, uh, yep. from Mark Taylor. With all the functionality coming into Teams now, how will this impact people coming to the internet? Is the content replicated hmm. or only in one location? And do you fore foresee the death of the internet? Uh, that's, I got asked this exact same question the other day. Um, no, I don't see the death of the internet at all. I see its role changing. Um, and you know, I've been working with internets for close to 20 years, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, basically, if we think about what an internet's providing, Teams is not going to solve your policies and procedures, governance and management. It, as we've just said, it's, it's not good at the, the corporate communications. Um, and so we see it as they, they will absolutely still exist. And in, in many regards, um, they've become more important. You know, one of our large customers is unfortunately a company that's really struggled through COVID, um, has gone into administration. The internet has actually become more important to them since that happened, because it's the one platform they can use to sort of centralise and, and communicate and share information. So the way I think about it and the way Lifestyle thinks about it, they're, they're critically important, particularly if everyone is you know, truly working in a digital digital world, which a lot of organisations have accelerated towards much faster than they planned for. Um, but what will change is this idea of we need to get users to adopt the internet. And our Chief Marketing Officer, Nick, made a fantastic point to me. This was pre-COVID when we were talking about, you know, what is the role of the internet? How important are they? And he just said, you know, Simon, we need to move from, I need an adoption plan for my users to adopt the internet and we need to flip it on its head to we need the internet to adopt our users. And I think that's uh, really sort of guided a lot of our thinking in recent months because if you look at what we're doing with Lifetiles Everywhere or even Lifetiles Reach, which Reach is not trying to be an internet, but it's, it's definitely fulfilling a, a com corporate communications uh, need, is make it available, serve the important stuff to your users where they're getting their work done. So they're, if they're in teams, work out how you can get the rich content you have in your internet because you will have processes around governance approvals you know stuff that you need in organizations but don't expect them to come to the home page like you've you know spent the last five ten years driving people towards except that they may not that they may exist in a tool like teams and do all their work there that's okay you can get to them and the great thing about this is that's where they're doing their work. You actually know where they are, right? You know, and you, what we're thinking about is how do we get to the next level of intelligence and smarts here where we contextualise a lot of this experience to know that, you know, if someone is in a meeting, let's not give them this information, but maybe prioritise this other stuff. If they're within the context of a team or they've just come out of working in a project team, certain information might be, um, might be important to them. So let's highlight that. So yeah, I'd encourage you to really think about not Teams as a threat to an intranet or the death of an intranet, but um, I guess an adjunct or an evolution of how your users can access all of the stuff that an intranet is meant to do for them. Um, and as I say, I think that actually makes intranets even more important as opposed to less. Yeah, Hopefully that different strokes for different strokes for different folks kind of thing. So yep, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, if there are any more questions, feel free to fire them away. Um, I've got to say personally, I was uh, absolutely loving the session where you uh, were talking about searching for the content within the video. That that to me is amazing. I, that's mind blowing. I think that is unreal. Thanks, Chris. It's so, a no, pleasure. Yeah, it, but, um, but yeah, and look, <laughs> look, look, everyone. In relation to the team support services stuff, there, what we've been um, 
uh, doing a lot of, if you're interested, is starting with the Teams game. We can do that as a complimentary session, whether it's with a small group just to get your heads around it, or whether it's with, um, with a, a part of your organisation, just using that as a vehicle to sort of engage, uh, educate your users who might be new to Teams, getting them to realise that, that this is a tool that can really help work process. It's not just a communications or a chat tool. It's not just, you know, a thing where everyone um, shares GIFs, right? Of course, there's a lot of that there now is a bit of it, but, yeah. but it's, it's a bit of fun. So if that if you think that'd help, we can uh, we can do that very, very easy, all virtual and online, as you saw, and then share with you the outcomes. Um, so you might get the, the imagination going and, and some new ideas on how you apply teams within your organisation. Yeah. Absolutely, and and look while while we're just waiting for questions to come through, I'll just quickly mention next week's uh, event. This time next Thursday, we'll be back to our eight thirty uh, session next week, where we're going to be inviting on a gentleman by the name of Pete Jensen, who uh, has a book that he's written about happiness. He's an expert in happiness and well-being. He's been a big influence on our co-founder Peter Newman Brown and his journey through happiness, which then led to the Live Smiles movement. And I've got him on next week too. To talk about what happens when the novelty of uh, you know working from home and all the stuff around that dies down a bit, and how do you check in on your people's well-being and make sure that you you keep them um, amped and excited and, and energetic and uh, and uh, providing for the for the company. So that'll be a really interesting discussion with him. Uh, as I said, same time next week. So so it looks like mate, we uh, we don't have any more questions for you. So that's uh means one of two things you've either bored everybody or you've uh, yeah, you've just been so great cool. that everybody knows everything <laughs> yeah, no problem at all and look i'd encourage everyone to listen into pete next pete jensen next week he's a really uh really nice guy and a really good speaker and um has a lot of worldly experience in, in this area so definitely worth listening to that one awesome all right thanks, everybody Think, yeah thanks for your time today it's been great uh we'll see you again next week thanks a lot yeah, thanks everyone bye-bye